Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, online safety commission to begin soon. A difficult goodbye for Saokuru's mother. And a new option for persons with disabilities. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spate. It's just a matter of time before the government announces the date when the Online Safety Act will come into effect now that it has been gazetted by Parliament. With numerous calls being made to prosecute people for insensitive posts on social media following the horrific Singatoka accident last weekend, government is in the final process of soon appointing the members of the commission. This is expected to bring an end to the circulation of pictures and videos such as those which rattle Fiji over the weekend. Kelly Vavala reports. There is unlimited access to internet nowadays, therefore the government is trying to ensure that social media platforms are safe. The act has been uh, gazetted, but the commencement date has not been gazetted as yet. And once uh, a commissioner is appointed and the office is set up, then, then the act will come into force. During a budget roadshow at FNU, students questioned the minister on how the Online Safety Act can help address postings of inappropriate photos. We've seen uh, some of these happening pictures on Facebook. Uh, sir, can you just elaborate on the students how this uh, online uh, bill of act works? The safety act that was passed has more to do with uh, social media uh, you know, exploitation. It would appear, some people I know who told me they were on the site, they said, as soon as people got off, rather than probably helping, they got out their phones and started just taking pictures. Said Kayum says people who were sharing pictures and videos of the Nambo accident should have had some decency. We expect people to be, you know, um, decent about it, humane about it. There's certain ethical and moral standards that we all need to adhere to. When the Online Safety Commission is formed, it's expected to make a difference as people will start lodging complaints about social media postings that are explicit and harmful to them. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. The advancement of social media platforms comes with responsibilities and users need to be aware of the effect and consequences of their postings. Psychologist Selina Kuruleva made the statement in regards to the wide circulation of images and videos on social media from the accident in Nambo last weekend. Koroi Tandolala reports. Psychology and counsellor Selina Kuruleva says social media users should be accountable for their actions and urges for the implementation of the existing law. There needs to be monitoring and implementation of the laws that already exist. Um, and it needs to be swift if, if we are going to get the desired outcome, which is that people stop doing this. The chief executive of the Save the Children Fiji says parents need to monitor their children's use of social media as it does not filter anything. Children use the internet, use social media for different, um, different things, um, for, for education, but also for social, socializing. Um, and that can also be a, a risk uh, to children. So it is the responsibility of parents as guardians of these children to ensure that um, the children, uh, they know what sites the children are going to. So you can monitor that. Lo McKenzie says the internet can be a good tool for children to get information. However, it also has negative impacts that highly needs monitoring. Koreit Andalala, FBC News. The mother of Chosevati Saokuru, who passed away yesterday following the horrific road accident in Nambo, says that saying goodbye to her son while he was on life support gave her closure. The 52-year-old mother says that despite seeing her son on his deathbed, they were able to say their goodbyes and hope that Chosevati could hear them. Philippe Naikaso has more. It was a hard few days for Milika Saukuru, who watched her son helplessly beside his deathbed. However, Milika says that she is at peace knowing that her son is in a better place. The first day he was admitted at the ICU, he could not talk or even move. We kept visiting him and he still was not responsive. Yesterday we all went as a family and said our goodbye to him. 
The mother of five says that Sosavati was her youngest and was a talented guitarist. He loved playing the guitar and he would be invited to play at church. And this was something I could see my son was passionate about. Chosivati was loved by everyone as he was caring and kind to others. Chosivati was a very well-behaved boy. He had a big heart and was religious. 18-year-old Chosivati Sokuru will be laid to rest next Wednesday. Meanwhile, Fijians continue to pay their respects where the fatal crash occurred by laying wreaths and reflecting on the tragic incident. Philip and I Castle, FBC News. Persons with disabilities are now able to choose a person to assist them in marking their ballot inside the polling station on election day and for pre-polls. The Fijian Elections Office has modified the procedures for voting for persons with disabilities in line with the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act passed in Parliament earlier this year. Ritika Pratap reports Fiji has also ratified the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. This new provision comes with requirements. The person who is assisting the voter must be a registered voter. Secondly, the presiding officer appointed by the Fijian Elections Office will be overseeing the process of assistance being provided by this person sele selected by the voter himself or herself. Mohamed Sanim also highlighted that the presiding officer will record the details of the voter as well as the person assisting in his or her record book for reference purposes. Another requirement is that a person may only assist up to two persons with disabilities. We hope that um, normal uh, trust and um, belief that uh, we usually have uh, on other members of the, uh, the societies that are close to us. When uh, we nominate uh, someone to assist us in uh, the voting, Section 47, subsection C of the Act says people with disabilities can choose someone to assist them in the process of casting their vote. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Still to come, Prime Fiji Limited's case begins in court. And while Otua Village gets tap water for the first time, details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in Nakas, on the Wagrong and Bula Fib, Nabondo and Nasir. Oya was it says a Lombasa, and the Teletan of Roman and Bula Fem, Nabondo and Sir. We have a Timeli, a Kanatau no Hinatoka, Teletakina of Roman and Bula Fem, Nabondo and Nasir. Never go find in a town and go sing a talk, a kit on the Teletakan and Bula Fem, Nabondo and Nasir. Bula Fem, Nabondo and Nasir. A performance bond of over $351,000 submitted to the Fiji Roads Authority by Prime Fiji Limited in relation to a streetlight renewal agreement came into question in court today. Fiji Roads Authority Head of Compliance Ravni Lal was the first to testify. Pranita Prakash reports. Prime Fiji Limited was charged by FICAC with one count of forgery and one count of using forged documents in 2016. FICAC alleges that Prime Fiji submitted a falsified respect security bond of over $351,000 to the Fiji Roads Authority while negotiating a street light renewal agreement. FRA Head of Compliance Ravni Lal testified that the contract was worth around $2 million while the second project was over $3.5 million. Lal stated Prime Fiji failed to provide a performance security bond within specified period and the time period was extended. He said then Prime Fiji emailed a scanned copy of the performance bond. Lal said he became suspicious that the bond could be fraudulent and raised his concern with the Westpac Bank. Lal said the bank informed that they had executed the bond of over $222,000. However, they were in possession of the original documents and were still executing the second bond amounting to over $300,000. He said that bank told them not to accept any documents unless advised by the bank. The trial continues tomorrow. Pranita Prakash, FBC News.
It was a joyous occasion for more than 45 households in Wailoto village, Wainimboka and Tailevu, when they received pipe water for the first time. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama commissioned the water project at the village yesterday worth $91,000. Savaira Thambo reports. It has been a tough journey for these villages as they only used the rainwater and creeks for cooking, drinking and washing. Village headman Rusiate Rekumbulu says their prayers have been answered. I speak on behalf of all those that will benefit from this water project and uh, thank you very much for giving us this wonderful opportunity. Now our prayers have been answered. It brings me great joy to watch the, them quickly progress from an idea to a promise to a reality that improves the lives of our people. Prime Minister Borenge Bani Marama reminded the villages that such projects are only possible when differences are put aside. This has been what's driven Fiji's recent success today and is what will continue to fuel, fuel our progress tomorrow. Projects like the Wailutua Water Project are just one of the many that have brought the quality of the life of Fijians everywhere to New Hawaii. Bani Marama says that many are quick to criticize every government program to score political points. However, they are focused on creating real solutions. Sabaira Tambua, FBC News. Villages of Vatukarasa, Nameka and Natuva in the district of Taivungale and Tailevu, together with two primary schools and Doloi settlement, will benefit from a newly opened nursing station. The government, which invested around half a million dollars to construct the nursing station, was opened by Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama today. Akusita Tale reports. Gone are the days when these villages had to travel more than three hours to the Loma Ivuna nursing station or the Vunindawa hospital in Aita Siri to receive basic medical needs. By making medical services more easily accessible to you, we are creating a healthier population. And by lifting the burden of traveling to receive medical care, we are saving you time and money, allowing you to focus your resources on things like raising a family, driving in your jobs and caring for your community. Prime Minister Vorenge Ben Marama says the health ministry will also provide a boat and an engine for the nursing station. That will allow the new station nurses to more easily visit villages to provide medical services and important health information to villages and school children. And it's not just these areas that are seeing the benefits as we lay the groundwork for a healthier future. The government allocated $382 million in the 2018-2019 budget to improve the health of Fijians by funding new capital projects and recruiting highly skilled medical officers. Akusit Tali, FBC News. It's very important to maintain discipline from an early age to be able to sustain the will to reach your goals in life. During the RSMS cadet passing out today, Education Minister Ayas Said Kayum reminded the students that being a cadet will help motivate and keep them focused on their studies. Kritika Kumar reports. Discipline is vital while in school and it goes a long way when completing studies. This is a wonderful display of discipline and coming together of the efforts of the RFMF and the school itself, but it's first and foremost, and most importantly, these wonderful students. The school head boy who received the Baton of Honor Award says it takes a lot of hard work to be a disciplined person, and being a cadet takes to another level. I'm going through so many workshops, how to lead my students, and being a disciplined student is one of my best qualities. Uh, it has me to be a disciplined uh, child, student. A discipline for the, especially for a junior student and uh, especially for us, the senior students. Meanwhile, more than 725 students of Ratusel Alasukuna Memorial School were part of the current pass out today. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. In sports later with Jamie, Fiji ready to host South Pacific Bodybuilding Championship, but up next is Rachel with Business. Thanks Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. VCO production to increase after receiving new equipment. And in growing Fiji, more roadside stalls in the Western Division. Stay with us. Lola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coraco, Singapore. 
I love listening to Gold FM. All of the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. In business tonight, the Bonneville Virgin Coconut Oil Factory has been given new equipment to help them increase their virgin coconut oil production. Women Minister Mary Saini Vuniwanga recently handed over an electric coconut scraper and a coconut milk extractor. At the handover, Vuniwanga says the factory was established as a means of economically empowering the women of Rambi, and she is pleased to see that it is serving its purpose. The Bonneville VCO factory coordinator says the two machines are expected to help the factory achieve its target of producing 500 litres of pure virgin coconut oil in a month. The two machines cost the ministry over $7,000. We'll uh, utilize uh, the machines well uh, in order to produce more uh, pure virgin coconut oil and other byproducts and also to uh, by increasing our production will increase the, um, the, the usage of our raw material and that will greatly help our people in terms of uh, generating income. And we now join Sinifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the trading world. Escalating trade tensions are putting pressure on the U.S. dollar after its recent rally. This will affect a number of currencies. The Aussie dollar is approaching a one-week high against the greenback after the U.S. Federal Reserve kept policy settings on hold. Closer to home, New Zealand's global dairy price index remained unchanged with an average selling price of $3,136 per ton. Global dairy prices have been falling in recent months as production in the world's biggest dairy exporter started to pick up after weather-related woes earlier in the year, suggesting stronger overall global supply. That's the update on the Forex market. Vinaka. Thanks, Anifa. Taking a look at the currency exchange rate set this morning for the Fijian dollar. Our dollar showed some gains against the US dollar, the, ki uh, the Kiwi dollar, the Kina, as well as the Yen, and slipped slightly against the other currencies we cover. As for the commodities market, the price of oil was on the rise at $69 per barrel. Gold was up a little to close at 1,209 an ounce, and silver closed at 1,537 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, the Minister for Industry and Trade, Fayaz Koya, has handed over five more roadside stalls in the Western Division. From the Madhuvani in Saivo, Ra to Vesese in Lotoka, vendors who would otherwise rely on makeshift sheds now have modelled stalls which can withstand any weather. Koya reminded the vendors to ensure the stalls are always full of fresh vegetables. He says government is committed to helping small businesses grow and the building of such stalls in a small way to provide that leg up. And that's business for tonight. Jamie joins you now with sports. Thanks, Rachel. And good evening. Up ahead in sports, Seruvakula names 2018 Fijian Rua squad and new era for Kachi Rugby Tournament. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. I'm Charlene Robert, Mirchi FM, Rocks in Lombasa. I'm Soname, Nasori Jackson, Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt, I'm in Bubble Single Line, Mirchi FM is hot in Lombasa. I'm Kritika from Jacks Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Fiji Airways and Rural Coach Seni Rusi Serovakula has named his 33-member squad to represent Fiji in the 2018 Australian National Rugby Championship. The forward pack sees experienced players such as Eroni Maui, Albert Tuisue, Ermasi Ronronro, Penny Reinre, Mosese Voka and Mesula Mendolokoto. 
The backs will see players such as Apisalome Vota, Serpu Peli Vula Rica, Frank Lomani, Enele Malele, and Alivreti Veto Kani, to name a few. The Indrua kicks off the championship with two home matches against the Melbourne Rising and Brisbane City next month. The 2018 Vodafone Kachi Rugby Tournament will be the biggest gathering ever of primary school rugby players at a single tournament. 52 teams from all over Fiji will participate at the three-day event, which kicks off next Monday. Nelly Tavanga reports. Since the establishment of the Kachi Rugby Tournament in 2002, the tournament was always held at the various districts. However, this has changed. Next week, we will have the Nationals. And from that number, just imagine about 1,000 222 plus players has made it through. So this is quality primary schools rugby we are talking about. Fiji Rugby Union Senior Operation Officer Solofi Nau says the tournament alone has the largest representation of players under them. It's a free structure and uh, there is more to come in the future uh, as we have spoken at length with the uh, committee and uh, your representative at the meetings that is going to be bigger and better in, uh, in the future years to come. Meanwhile, Vodafone Fiji came on board today to support the three-day tournament. Close to our heart because this is where the rugby actually starts. It's really at the grassroots level where you're looking at the under-9s all the way up to under-14, on to the secondary school level rugby, and then to the under-18s, 20s, and then eventually to nationals. Um, and of course, uh, beyond that, they can also secure um, overseas contracts. Kachi Rugby Tournament has been around for a decade and has produced professional rugby players. The tournament starts on Monday and ends Wednesday. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. The Fiji Under-19 football side romped to a 3-1 victory over Vanuatu in the Under-19 OFC Championship encounter in Tahiti last night. It was a showdown between the Melanesian brothers and once again the match lived up to expectation with both sides gunning for it from kickoff. A local rugby icon has stepped in today to get more women involved in sports through a clinic for year 9 and 10 students at Jane Narayan College. The Women for Sports Clinic is a breakthrough for the predominantly academic-oriented school. John Tambori reports. Empowering women through sports is how rugby icon Sarah Mayambai is giving back to the community. The goal is uh, trying to uh, get uh, as much women in uh, sporting organization in, in the future. While sharing many important lessons, by ensure the girls had fun during the clinic. Uh, not only that, it's uh, more about to do with uh, girls, you know, can build uh, their social skills through sports um, and, and dealing with peer pressure and I can contribute to their academic excellence. The nine student, Surwe Timbati Sarisari, says she has learned a lot from the clinic. We learn about working together as a team and not playing by yourself and by like teamwork too, by respecting others other other players. Today's clinic was a success here at Jane Ryan College. Now Sarah Mayambai hopes to take this same program to other schools around the country. John Sabore, FBC Sports. The Fiji Bodybuilding and Fitness Federation says it is ready to host the South Pacific Bodybuilding Championships. Federation President Vilas Chant says bringing the Games home will also be a boost to its development efforts. Stella Toei with more. Close to 60 participants from other Pacific Islands are expected to take part in the upcoming championship. We are trying to encourage our athletes, basically in Fiji and the Pacific Island countries, to, to participate in this uh, competition. Because I think this is not the end of their career part until the athlete. They can uh, finish from here and they can go to the world stage. Fiji hopes to rope in most of its potential athletes into the competition. We would be able to fill at least 15 to 20 athletes who are in a, a very good position for uh, medals. And we're hoping to have a very uh, successful event in terms of uh, Fiji being hosting and uh, uh, vying for most of the medals. With the recent change in administration, the Federation believes they were able to meet the government's requirements to host the championship. We were able to get our finance arranged. And uh, I think the most important thing is we have managed to meet the governance requirements of Fiji Sports Commission. I think with those uh, challenges being, being addressed, we are now ready to host a, a national competition. The championship will be staged in Suva and will be held on the 26th to 28th of October. And we'll see athletes from countries like the Solomon Islands, 
Tonga, Samoa and New Caledonia competing. Stalatawi FBC Sports. In today's play of the day, a brilliantly timed header by Marco Jankovic that gave a 10-man Bentley Greens a 1-0 win over the Wellington Phoenix in the FFA Cup. The son of former Real Madrid defender Milan Jankovic put the Greens in front with a header from a corner kick in the 23rd minute. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and in new media. The answer for anyone who is not fond of doing laundry or ironing. Details after the break. Radio Fiji One, Ingatoka. Radio Fiji One, Nando Moiviti. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Such a fantastic day with a splash of sunshine and windy conditions. Keep warm as it will be another cold night. In other good news, we are only two days away from the fantastic weekend. Taking a look in the west, it's been a sunny day with scattered clouds. Eastwards from Pekhaba to Suva, also sunny with light evening showers predicted. And up north after a few light drizzles, it turned out to be fine. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 9.39 p.m. with high tide at 3.58 a.m. Sunrise at 6.30. For tomorrow, whatever your plans may be, either it be fishing, swimming or if you have some outdoor work, you're good to do so as the weather looks pretty clear. Tomorrow's stems, the cold season is here to stay as most centers will drop as low as 17 degrees. And looking further on to Friday, clear sunny skies is what I see for now and hopefully it stays that way. That's all from the FPC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, should sex education be included in both primary and secondary school level? Yes, I think sex education should be made compulsory in the education system since there is an increase in teenage pregnancy now in Fiji. Recapping the main stories for tonight, online safety commission to begin soon, a difficult goodbye for Saukuru's mother, and a new option for persons with disabilities. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment this week, we're asking, should police arrest people on the spot for filming accidents? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day was sent in by Pamela Thurangaiviu, children of Karoko Village in Dakaundrove, playing on the village foreshore. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was the FBC News for tonight. From the team and I stay safe. Good night. My name is Nambualumbuwa, as Preni North is famous, Radio Fiji 2 is also famous in all places. Radio Fiji 2 is the country of the country. I like to listen to Radio Fiji 2 to listen to Radio Fiji 2, and I like to listen to Radio Fiji 2 to listen to Radio Fiji 2. I am Uncle King of Singatoka Town, a taxi driver, and I like to listen to Radio Fiji 2 to listen to Radio Fiji 2. Radio Fiji 2 is the country of the country.